Who's looking forward to today? Me! I want you to go out and have fun, play hard, tackle hard, and support each other. Like the coach said, tackle hard, use your shoulders, George. Offside, open your other eye, Red. Penalty blue, white player. How can he roll away when people won't get off of you? Hey, mate. Calm down, eh? It's only a game. Welcome to Small Blacks TV. No doubt your season's going well and you're having lots of fun because we're about to have a good time right here because today's special guest is Black Fern, Kenja Coxedge. Welcome to the show. Boom. Nice handshake. So, Kenj, Kendra, what's another nickname you've got? Uh, I've got a few nicknames. Um, Kenj, or I get called Almo with Almo. the Black Ferns. So, Almo, what have you been up to? Been pretty busy recently uh, with work and training. Got a big year with the World Cup coming up, so obviously with the girls' rugby is growing around New Zealand, it's full on with work as well. So what is your actual work, as well as being a black fern? Uh, so my job is to, to grow women's rugby, so just getting young, small black girls or, you know, into playing the game. So you're a black fern and looking for the next black fern's dream job. Why did you get into rugby? I basically got into rugby um, because um, I wasn't very good at tap dancing. I've got a twin sister. Mum sent us down to tap dancing one day. Horrible at it. So sent me off with our family friends and went down into the rugby field and then just never looked back. Surely you couldn't be that bad at tap dancing because I've seen you got twinkle toes on the field. Where did you do this tap dancing? Where did you grow up? Uh, in the Naki. Yeah, Taranaki. Taranaki hardcore, eh? Yep. I've got another mate who's from the Naki. His name's um, Bowden. You might know him. That's right, you do know him, because you did a masterclass with him. Coming up right now. Hey, I'm Bowden Barrett, All Blacks first five and kicker. Hi, I'm Kendra Coxedge, Black Ferns halfback and kicker. We've assembled some of the best Small Blacks kickers in town. And it's time for today's kicking masterclass. OK, today's skill is the grubber kick. Very handy in wet conditions or when teams are putting the front line under pressure. We can use it to set up our wingers and hopefully put them away for a try, so... Any key points about a grubber kick? Keep your body forward over the ball. Perfect, so we don't want to be leaning back, otherwise the ball may go in the air. We want to stay forward and allow that ball to go nice and low. Make sure you kick the ball forward over the ground. Yeah, nice, so that's our follow through, just kicking the ball forward, allowing it to roll out end over end. Okay guys, here we go, all in, all in, nice and tight. Alright guys, let's give 110% out there. We train like we play, okay boys, so let's go kick it on three. One, two, three. Kick it! Okay guys, the grubber kick, few key points, ball in two hands, when we follow through with our kick, the ball is going to go nice and low and rotate like that, so when we kick the ball you want to be kicking this part, okay, so it gets that end over end, bounces nice and low off the foot and it goes along the ground, so Ken's just going to show you how to do it, point the toe and point the nose of the ball so it can go end over end and roll out nice and straight, nice, that's it. Really good. So step in it, a little follow through. Good work. Can you guys curve them? My name is Cameron White. I'm 12 years old and play first five for Mary St. Pats. I love rugby because tackling and scoring tries. Just angle it sort of to the right and you're still kicking this part but it will naturally curve back in. Okay? It's like a banana grubber. For how many can you do? What we're going to do is we're going to be throwing the ball over our heads. It has to go over your head, okay, and then catching the ball in behind you. Rules are you have to do it as fast as you can, and the ball must go over your head. So he's making sure the ball's going over his head, okay, but he's going a bit slow, what do you reckon? It's a bit slower, I think he needs to speed it up a bit. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, guys, if you drop it, you're out. Last man standing wins a ball. Three, two, one, go. Oh! <laughs> yes, one from one. Too easy. Good work. That's all yours. So, Kendra, back in the day when I was representing the Mighty Tawa, I won Most Improved Player for the Under-12s. My mum still has that ribbon to this day. Have you won anything as cool as my Tawa ribbon? You know, over times I've won a, a couple of a couple of awards. Um, probably the biggest one, 2015, um, World Women's Rugby Player of the Year. Of the whole world. Of the whole world. Just women though, because my one was kind of club, so that was boys and girls. girls. Yeah, so mine was just women. So. Yeah. Tell us about your award, because you know. It's... No, it was um, it was pretty cool. I got to go to the awards awards night. You know, obviously all the All Blacks were there. It was after the the World Cup final, so yep. I also got to attend the World Cup final. Um, so that was all really exciting. So award ceremony, they opened the award, Women's Player of the Year, Kendra Coxedge, what was your reaction? I froze, yeah, I was in shock. When I was walking up towards the stage, all I could think of was don't trip up the stairs, <laughs> one step at a time. The All Blacks were there and they gave, you know, a standing ovation. So yeah. to me that was, you know, pretty, pretty special. Like what kind of trophy did you get? Uh, you get the, the World Rugby logo on a trophy, so it's a little wee silver one. Well, it's time to go to our Women's Sevens Profile of the Week. Um, the reason why I did it was because it was... And it was like a break, because I usually do netball a lot, and then like rugby is like a break from netball, so it was good to have like a different environment in me, yeah. I'm a winger, so I'm like a speedster. I just, they just tell me when I get the ball, just run. So I try and run fast. Good ball there. Oh, what a Very pass. good pass indeed to Pulei Atua, another one of the young stars for St Mary's College. Pulei Atua with a very, very good finish under the post for Wellington. Well, there was some persuading to be done with my mum and my dad, especially. But um, at the end, yeah, they kind of agreed because I was like just stuck to one sport and since I'm young, they, they don't want me to like be into just one. They want me to like go all over and just try as many sports as I can while I'm still young, yeah. I think it's because like rugby is like outside. So you get to like enjoy the sun and like be outside with your friends. I just encourage them to play because it's like a team sport. So it's like not an individual, like if you're like down, you have like other people to back you up. Like you'll have people there to like pick you up if you're sad, like they'll be there for you on the field and off. So I just encourage them to play because it's like a team sport and team sport like wins games. I'm Maze Liana Fuliata and I'm all in. Welcome back to Small Blacks TV. We've got a very special guest, Kendra Coxedge. Kenz, what were you like at primary school? Um, well, I wasn't an angel. Um, I, I just kind of went to school to, to eat my lunch and run around with a ball, usually. Did you used to write anything on your pencil case or bag? Uh, on my pencil case, I used to write uh, my name and get all my friends to write their name as well. Would, would you write Kenz or Elmo? Or uh, probably Kenz back, back then. then. Yeah, yeah, just Kenz or Kendra back then. Yeah, well, I reckon Lil Noor might be in a bit of trouble this week because he loves writing on anything except the school books. It's time for St McCaw's Primary. This is St McCaw's Primary. A place where young minds are filled to overflowing with the fountain of knowledge. A sacred place to share ideas and pontificate on the wonders of the world. At least, that's what most of us are doing. Remind me what part of the test this is. Um, the bit right before you say... Meet me after school for detention. Thank you. OK, Noah, here's your erasers. Start erasing. Like this. 
thought it was going to be something to help my rugby like last time. Well, you can't win them all, Noah. <sighs> Jeepers. <clears throat> oh, man. Finished, Mr. Sneed. That was tough. Okay, Noah, you can go now. Whew. Oh, Noah, pass me that ball. Yeah. Oh, wow. See, so, Noah, you've always got to look for the positive in everything, even detention. Yes, I remember the school days full of learning, laughter, and rugby. If you think you're smarter than your teacher, you probably need to think a little harder. Hey guys, I'm with my good mate Rugger. Woo! And welcome to Numbers of Dane. Today's number of the day is... Ta-da! One, two, three, four. Correct! What position does number four play on the team? He is a uh, lock. Very tall man. They're very tall. Taller than me? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Rugger. Huh? A lot taller, actually. Huh. Oh, well. Question. Is there any way you can score four points in a rugby game? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you can, Rugger. Oh, how come? There's, uh, there's no way of doing it at the moment. What have I scored? Four tries. Oh, yes, four tries, maybe. Not four points, though, eh? Oh, you know what you're talking about. Have you ever scored four tries, Dane? <laughs> nah, I've never scored four tries, Rugger. Oh, well, what about in a season? Yes, and my, when I was very young, I scored a few tries, but when I've got a lot older, I'm a bit slower now, so yeah, oh. don't get too many tries, especially four. That's pretty, that's pretty special. Did you know my favourite animal has four legs? Four legs? What's your favourite animal, then? Well, it's a turtle. A turtle? They're real fast, though. Not on the land. How many animals can you name with four legs? Oh, I can name a lion. Yep. A cat. Yeah. A dog. Uh-huh. That's three. And that's about all, Rugger. There's so many more out there, eh? Cow. One, two, three, four. Four, eh? We'll go with four. Aha. Uh -huh. Four animals with four legs. And that's the number four. Guys, if you text this week's number and we draw it out, you could win a rugged pack. So text in the number to 4888 and be in to win. But kids, remember to ask your parents first. Kenj, the Black Ferns have a pretty awesome haka. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, no, it's a pretty cool haka. Um, obviously, it's a big part of the New Zealand culture. So it's pretty cool to be able to stand up there and, and do the haka to other teams. So how do you practice your haka for the Black Ferns? We, we basically all get together um, it's a, at night time after a big day of training. Um, the rookies have to, they tend to have to do it in front of the rest of the group. What about pukana? Sometimes practice in the mirror, you know, when you get up in the morning. Just, just brush your teeth and yeah. do it! Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah true. <laughs> yeah. Can you speak to real? Uh, only little bits and pieces. Um, we did a bit at, um, at Intermediate at yep. home at school. Well, you know who probably knows more than that many words is our small blacks and our mate Nehe right now on Real Rugby. Nehe here with a few of my friends. Jamie Lee. Brett Clan. Tito. Reagan. Samisi. Each week, we're going to add something to Tani that he'll need to play the game. And we're going to learn some Tereo along the way. Okay, we're all good with our kākahu. We have our taro poto, poraka and tōkena on. Now we need some of my favourite things. Pūtu. Who knows what pūtu means? Boots. Boots. All right, yep. Got a pair here. What do you reckon about these bad boys? No. Kamapūtu. The gum boots. Probably not ideal for the for the rugby field, but where are some places that we could wear them? Farm. Farm. Yep, farm. Farm. Garden, yep. Pretty much with him. River, really, eh? Yeah. Town. School. Yeah, shopping. Shopping for more gum boots. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll get rid of these ones. We'll go with the rugby boots, eh? Yeah. They look way better. Who do you reckon will win a race? Me in gum boots or Tani in his flash, fast looking rugby boots? <laughs> flash, fast looking rugby, rugby boots. Rugby boots. Oh. 
Me too. I bet Tani too. Mm. Putu is our rugby boots. All right, small blacks, another important word. The word we're going to use for today is hopu. It's important, especially for kickoffs or kicks. Who knows what hopu means? Catch. Catch. There you go. Hopu, cut by, good catch. Okay, kids, we're going to see how good your fella's hopu is. We'll jump, we'll get you guys to go back, jump on the line, one line behind each other. Kuru. Kabai, all right, who's our best uh, small black catcher? How do you guys? All right, here we go. Come out, bro, come out to the side. See how good you are. I'm gonna do a high kick and you gotta catch it, okay? Do you want him to catch it or do you want him to drop it? That's it. <laughs> oh. oh! Who else wants to have a turn? Yep, ready, bro? Oh, that's a tough one. Hey! Cut by kids. So what's our Māori word for catch? Hopu. Hopu. Catch. Hey guys, if you want to win this ball to practice your own kicks, text KICK to 4888. You'll go into the draw to win this ball signed by us. The winner will be announced on smallblacks.com. Good luck. My name is Nehe. One of the most valuable lessons I learned is it doesn't matter where you came from or how big you are, you can do anything and be anybody. Start believing. I tell myself, I'm going to beat him. I'm better than he is. I'm faster, I'm stronger, and I'm well prepared. I'm gonna beat you now. Are you ready? Here it comes. Oh man, you said you were ready. Okay, kids, remember, always warm up before playing or practicing. Okay, Kenj, show us your best friend. I'll take it easy on you, eh? Noah, you okay? Noah? Yep, Hello, and welcome to Small Blacks Rugby Smart. Today I'm going to be helping Rugger, William, Webb and Alice learn all about how to be safe and have fun playing their favourite game. she'll do this time. This time, I'm going to do a triple overhead back bend somersault swan dive. Whoa! This is not going to be good. Oh, no! Mikey! Alice, are you OK? Mm. No, William, of course not. I dropped the ball! Ouch! My ankle hurts! I'm not surprised, Alice. That was a massive crash. Ugh. And now my ankle hurts. But I need to keep playing to get my try. Alice, we need to check that ankle out before you do even more damage. Let's get riced. Great idea, Kieran. I'll have the salmon and avocado sushi. Not rice, William. Riced. R-I-C-E-D. It's what you do if you hurt a muscle, like Alice's sore ankle. OK, Alice, R stands for rest. So take a seat and chill out. I stands for ice. William, fetch the ice bucket, please. Ah! William! Mm. I thought you said she needed to chill out. What does the C stand for, Mr Kieran? Caterpillar? 
No web. C is for compression. That means putting a little pressure on it with a bandage. It helps to keep the swelling down. That's a swell idea, Karen. E stands for elevation. Keep that foot up, Alice. I know what D stands for. Go on then, Web. It stands for diagnosis. No, Web. D stands for... Ah, oh, well, yes, Web. Well done. Diagnosis. So Alice will need to go to the doctor to find out what's wrong. Karen? Yes, William? Now that Alice has sorted out about that sushi... Rugby is a great game and we all have to look out for one another. If you want to know more about all this stuff, then ask your coach. Have a great, fun and safe season. I stopped playing rugby because it was fun and active. Why did you start playing rugby? Very similar to you. I just enjoyed playing with my mates and uh, at the same time just loved the love the challenge of, you know, competition. I started playing rugby for the same reasons, um, to have fun with my friends on a Saturday morning. To be active, um, also just to have fun with my mates, really, make new friends as well, and get away from home, from the parents, and getting out of chores. Uh, I think I don't have too much of a choice. My dad pretty much took me down to the, to the rugby club, but I'm glad he did. Heaps of fun playing for my mates. I used to love half time, we used to get oranges, so that was pretty cool as well. If you weren't playing rugby, what would you be doing? Probably be out driving a tractor somewhere on a farm. That's what I want to get into when I finish up with my footy, go farming. If I wasn't playing rugby, I'd um, study, do a bit of uh, mechanical engineering, so I'd probably be doing that. I like um, fishing, diving, um, so yeah, if I'm not playing rugby, usually I'm um, slaying the seas. Probably be a builder or something. I did a little building out of, out of school for a couple of years, so yeah, probably be up a tradie up the coast somewhere, yeah, doing that. OK, that's it for us this week, Kenj. Thank you so much for coming through. Remember, you can watch every episode online right here. Elmo, do it with me now. Stay on side, New Zealand. Boom! Do you want me to show you how to get a most improved award? How? You have to be able to do cool passes. Like oh, that. Like that. My mate Sunny. Oh, true that. Get it, nah, mine's fun with more than you'll see. Look at that. That's a bad pass. Yeah. And it's my favourite! And hot. Nice work, Tommy!